The clock was running out. It was another extermination. Another day, Lucifer would usually be hiding in his castle, untouched, unbothered. But as he brushed the back of his left hand over his jacket, grabbed his walking cane, and sighed as he looked at his butler Priminger, who was carrying his walking shoes on a silver plate, he groaned. Do I have to... Priminger smacked his lips. Sire, sire, I advise against it. This argue on the heart of your lovely daughter. Two weeks ago, Lucifer had a fight with Charlie. He wanted her here, safe. As despite the heavenly contract, stating Hellborn should be left alone, he knew Adam was a bit of a loose cannon and if provoked by Hellborn would definitely strike. But Charlie wanted to stay at her hotel, something he didn't understand, but, well, a father had to support his daughter, even if she was making a mistake. Well, still better than her joining only Succubi and doing thirsty music videos for losers who had too much money on their bank accounts. During the fight, Charlie had dared him to walk the streets of the Pentagram right before the extermination, to see the results of his foolishness, to see the carnal fear of everyone for themselves. As if it was his fault. Which it was. Brim had reminded him that, technically, he caused all this. So reluctantly, he decided to go after all. Preminger had given him a route to follow. It was barely led out of the upper demon cluster, so his lord would not actually run into anyone that would be of any actual bother to him. It was just so that Preminger didn't have to lie to Charlie should she ask him, did dad actually go out during the purge? With one last sigh, Lucifer left the castle into the upper echelon. The cluster was the most outer part of the pentagram, a dedicated to a gated community where demons, even older than the overlord Zestiel himself, lived. They were so rich, so opulent, so powerful, they lost all interest in controlling parts of the pentagram and they barely even bothered upholding their own soul contracts. It was ironic, really. The most powerful Cinnaborn demons to ever exist, and they spent their eternity perched up in their high castles, rubbing themselves in their own grandeur, not even realizing they had become prisoners of their own making. At least they were good neighbors. But as Lucifer stepped out onto the street, all he saw were empty streets. But as Lucifer stepped outside, all he saw were empty streets and sealed homes. None of the upper cluster were out. Not even Shireen, the singer, or, well, retired singer. Usually she swam in her football-sized hot tub. But... Now even she was locked in her manor, probably shivering. Windows sealed by thick plates of metal. And quietly multiple Hellborn were patrolling through the gardens, probably as decoys to make it look like there were more sinner... Probably as decoys to make it look like there were less Sinnerborn here, so no one would actually bother. That did make fear Lucifer feel a hint of disappointment, but he couldn't quite tell why. His gaze shifted to the silhouette of the city. Smoke was coming from multiple places. As the bravest of demons used this opportunity to burn, loot and murder, while others were playing a deadly game of hide and seek, trying to escape their fate. Lucifer had to admit, hearing the carnage was different, 
It wasn't this jolly mix of screams and laughter. It was sad and desperate. The King of Hell took a left out of the gated community in accordance to Primindra's map. He won't go deeper into the city, of course. Only a single housing block. He never would be more than 20 minutes on foot away from the castle. As a matter of fact, he could still see his library tower peek over the apartment buildings. His path led him to a highway overpass. On it were multiple car crashes. Hearing the loud arguing from above was a little entertaining. But it was beneath the overpass bridge when Lucifer suddenly stepped on something soft. Thinking he stepped in hellhound poo, he jumped back. Yuck! But then he realized it weren't excrements he stepped on, but a hand. A charred, black hand. Its arm going towards a pile of black trash bags. Lucifer inhaled in shock and was almost considering continuing his walk. Sure, this was normal, in hell, but then the hand twitched. For a moment he remained there, watching as the arm twisted around. Lucifer gulped, looking down at a pitiful display of violence. It was you, a demon, charred, broken, destroyed beyond recognition. You didn't even realize someone had stepped on you. Everything just hurt so much. And yet you kept crawling forward, or more, rolled out from the black trash bags. You had been dismantled completely, a charred corpse, and even that was still a compliment. Your eyes were gone, your chest cut open, organs removed, and everything below your hip was missing entirely. So was your right arm. Lucifer watched your grotesque form helplessly and blindly crawl forward, dragging your abused body like a dried-up slug. Who? No. What could have done this to you? Your throat had been slit open. Even if you had the strength or lungs to breathe properly, you wouldn't be able to say it. So this was the horror of immortality. The King of Hell knew you'd regenerate, somehow. It probably would take months, and not to mention, probably also lead to further punishment by other demons who saw your weak body and decided to humiliate you. He gulped down a heavy glob of spittle. His chest hurt, watching the pathetic display before him. As a soft breeze blew through the underpass, causing your body to break out into violent shaking. That breeze alone must cause you horrendous pain, like you were dropped into acid or something. Jeez. He knew hell way back when it was just a sulfur pit, where sinners were punished via torture. But at least back then... They were given just enough limbs to regenerate properly and quickly. To keep the punishment cycle going, of course, but... Not like this. Never like this. This was beyond anything he had ever seen. He placed a hand on his face. And then sighed. He stepped next to you. Shoved his arms beneath you pulling you into his grasp. You were way past the point of being able to feel anything but torment. As such, you couldn't respond to him as he carried you. Prim would know how to fix you up. With his heart racing, he abandoned the rest of his walk, choosing to rush back home as quickly as he could. 
He pushed your skull-like head against his chest, hoping it gave you just a little comfort. With fire in his heart, he broke the entrance gate of his castle, sweat pouring from his forehead. Preminger? Yes, sire? Blinking, Lucifer turned around. The imp butler was right behind him. I apologize for my late arrival. I was sorting your laundry. Priminger tilted his head, his lips pursing up in disgust. What is that thing? He asked, his left brow raised with disdain. I, I well, um... Lucifer looked down at your empty eye sockets. As he had been carrying you, you vaguely realized the touches on your body. While you couldn't fathom their intention, you had weakly held onto his coat. I... I want to fix her? Sir, what you're holding there is human cattle. Prim hoped by saying that Lucifer would just drop you and discard you. Though he just tilted his head confused. Ugh. The cannibals of Cannibal Town usually sign contracts with desperate errands to farm their bodies for ethical sourced meat and to sell off their health organs. A non alcoholic liver is very expensive in hell. And many demons are looking for ways to reset their vices so they can experience the pleasures for the first time once more. Lucifer blinked. Prim rolled his eyes and then took you from him. Very well then, sire. It isn't up to me as your butler to refuse you. I shall bathe her and take off her wounds. Don't worry. Priminger turned on his heels. Uh, let her stay in Lilith's old room. Prim stopped in his tracks for only a mere second, and then wordlessly continued his walk. The imp delivered you into Lilith's bathroom, washing you and then started preparing to make your regeneration more comfortable. It would help the butler knowing what kind of demon you were exactly before you had become cattle. And so he went with the mere basics. He placed eye patches on your eye holes, wrapped your body in bandages, leaving enough room for your legs and arms to regrow. Additionally, he gave you the mercy of putting you to sleep using his own powers by drawing a little green rune into your forehead. Meanwhile, Lucifer sat in his workshop. He was having second thoughts. He didn't know what kind of sins you committed in life. And he definitely didn't want to find out you were like one of those demons you saw on TV. Those loudmouths, disgusting whores. It also had been seven years since his wife Lilith divorced him, which really made him retreat and stick to himself. He wasn't sure his social battery was strong enough to handle another person in his castle. Though, as the days passed, he was getting more and more comfortable with the idea. One day he was sitting next to you, with a gossip magazine in hand, as you lied there. The sigil by now had been removed as your eyes, arms, and legs had regenerated. Still, your body had been scarred, and it probably would still take some time. The butler took great care at keeping you medicated to prevent the pain at getting worse. It was just a gentle knocking rather than a shower of torment. Your eyes were... Beautiful, completely lavender-colored with red glowing pupils. And you always looked at Lucifer with curious caution. It was your twelfth year in hell. You suddenly made a noise of discomfort, causing Lucifer to turn his attention to you. 
With your bandaged hands, you reach for your throat. It felt as if someone was choking you. Hey, 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 are you alright? You didn't want to call for Prim. Seconds later, though, you inhaled through your mouth, a noise coming from your throat. Which caused Lucifer to sign relief? Oh, it's just your vocal cords. They finally regrew. He pulled his chair closer and looked at you with a smile. That's great. Now you can explain everything. So, who the fuck are you? You croaked and then coughed. Sighing, Lucifer reached for a kettle filled with water. Here, Daisy, drink something. He placed the spout on your scarred lips before gently nudging the liquid out. Greedily you drank. It felt like a fire in your body was being doused. Though after only four gulps, you raised your hands to make him stop. Your stomach was full. Already? Oh, sorry. Since your stomach was still reforming, you couldn't eat or drink that much. So, what happened to you? He said after replacing the cattle. He said after placing the cattle back. I was part of a group. For safety. Because of the exterminations. And other demons. We called our group Road Redemption. <laughs> Even though your throat hurt, you continued your explanation. It was just a small little biker gang. 23 members. You had been the leader's favorite plaything. But that was okay. He provided you with alcohol and drugs. Though, after last year's extermination, your leader had died. Permanently. Putting his second-in-command at the top. A disgusting, filthy demon called Filthbreed that led the group to committing more than just petty crimes, some gambling and drugs. Honestly, as Lucifer listened to the early stage of your gang, it almost sounded like a demonic daycare. Cute, almost. There had been a falling out with you and Filthbreed, and he chained you up in the back of his van, harvesting your organs and meat. He didn't care for the low profits it got him. After all, just after all, just one cow can't feed a family. This was all about simply humiliating you. This had went on for half a year. When finally the day of the extermination came, he had set you on fire, made sure you could not run. Surely that piece of shit was right, not riding his Harley and thinking an angel took care of you. <laughs> if only he knew that an angel in fact did take care of you, just not in the way he predicted. It was a sad story indeed, but Lucifer hated to admit that to himself, it was quite an entertaining one as well. It also explained why the trauma inflicted by your former biker boss didn't seem to manifest. You just were a tough kind of girl. You would shrug this off in a heartbeat. And actually, Lucifer liked that. He liked that a lot. He hated when girls were whiny. Since he was whiny himself. You remained bedridden for four more days. It was very painful. Regenerations usually didn't take this long, but due to you quite literally being an empty husk, it was slowed down by a lot. It was today when you had finally healed enough to walk again, though it was still difficult. Lucifer had been so kind to help you. With your arm wrapped around his shoulders, you walk through his castle's halls. Truthfully, you still couldn't fully grasp the fact that you were spending quality time with Satan. 
Well, that was something to be proud of. Man, and your former boss... And your former biker boss probably would have been proud of you. By now the only marks that were left on you were scars around your belly button going up to your chest. To Lucifer's and Primager's surprise, after they had removed the bandages, they realized that you in fact were a wine sprite this entire time. A very common demon for the last layer of hell, but on the pride layer relatively rare. Wine sprites were beautiful creatures with normally very long hair in any color. Full, rosy lips, clear, smooth, reddish skin, and small, bushy bunny tails and ears. Though due to injuries, your hair had been reduced to a pixie cut, as it was still ever growing. You had quite the muscular body. Wine sprites had the ability to turn their own blood into wine, as well as aging wine rapidly by simply touching it. Sure, it may not be a powerful ability, but it was great for parties. You are dressed in what you usually prefer to wear, even though it didn't quite fit into the regal home of your savior. A black tank top which had the name of your preferred metal band on it, combined with black hot pants and knee-high boots. You swiped your left bunny ear out of your face. Usually they were sticking up, but ever since you had been turned into cattle, they had become floppy. Since you had been brought here, Lucifer had been the kindest man you have ever met. Well, it seems as if he still got it. He was just naturally charming towards women he was interested in. And he had to admit, he liked that you could kick his ass. So... You grunted a little strained. Your knees hurt from not using them for so long. What's for dinner today, Lucy? He blushed. Lilith had been the last person to call him by that name. He couldn't believe he actually allowed you to call him that. Maybe... just... Maybe it was because he liked you. Uh, it's Friday, so Prim is making lasagna. <laughs> He smiled like a teddy bear. You know I like my lasaga. You chuckled. Lucifer could be a child sometimes, but you were okay with that. It was kind of cute. The two of you around the corner, and that's when his tone became a little more mellow. I'm glad you're getting over it. You gulped, waiting for him to continue speaking. And you're healing very well, too. Well, yeah, thanks to your help. Lucifer bit his lower lip. So, I take it you're gonna hit the road again soon? You wanted to stop in your tracks, but that would lead to you having to fully acknowledge him. You tried to think quickly of what to say next. You needed to figure out where he was getting at. Did he want you gone? Did he want you to stay? And so you played it cool, simply saying, I, I, I'm not sure, I mean, I haven't even thanked you for saving me. He blinked, but but you did. You, you said thank you. You smirked. And then you purposefully tripped over your feet. Quickly, the King of Hell caught you midair, holding you bridal style. Lucifer looked at your face. He was blushing ever so faintly. Whoopsie. Guess I haven't fully recovered yet. You mused, narrowing your eyes lovingly. <laughs> Maybe I'm just falling for you. He smirked at your pun. Good then that you caught my attention. Your faces came closer. I know. Would be a shame if you dropped me like an anchor. 
your lips touched, gently, soothingly so. Though there was some resistance coming from his flesh, not from Lucy directly, but more his divinity. It seemed as if demons and angels didn't mix so well. You could feel electricity surge through you, but then you grabbed the back of his head, grabbing a full tuft of his hair, forcing him to get closer. You were a big girl. You could take a little bit of cattle prodding. His tongue entered your mouth lovingly. It swished and slid across your own. He explored your mouth gently and slowly, which made you chuckle into his throat. His hesitation was so cute. And so, you took the lead. Placing your own hand on his chin, you deepened the kiss. Your tongue pushing past him, licking over the inside of his mouth. His toes curled. He was having difficulty holding you up. His heart raced. He wanted more. You wanted more. And after an eager, long makeout, he finally separated from your lips with a lewd expression. I want you to stay with me, he whispered. And you smiled. <laughs> of course, Lucy. Smug, you added, but only if you make me come. Energetically, he pulled you closer, taking a few steps into the direction of his own bedroom. Well, let's do this then, he said in a playful, heroic tone. Hey, thank you for watching my video until the very end. I'm very glad you enjoyed it so far. But before I say goodbye, I would like to shout out all of my lovely high tier channel members. Twilight, Zoe, Angel, Angry Boxman, Chasta Misery, Hella, Bitbit, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, Sleepy Town, Zachary, Nicodemus D, Ash Wisdom, Ikea, The Tribute, and AJ Anime Girl. Lastly, I'd like to thank all of my other channel members. You're all wonderful little mates. Thank you for watching. Bye.